Hey everyone, uh, another wonderful day in Denmark here. Uh, I guess a wonderful day in Denmark, not another because I just arrived here yesterday. While on the train, I had a conversation with Jesper about some different theories going back to the origins of the gods, and I just wanted to address that there's a lot of times as science progresses or as our study of archaeology and history progress, certain concepts and theories become outdated, kind of like eugenics is outdated. We no longer think that the size of the volume of someone's skull has direct proportion to their intelligence, as we know that that's not the case, that someone who has a smaller cranial volume can be just as intelligent as someone who's a larger one, and that there is different variances among subspecies of humans that, they, that we are still one species. So just as that's outdated, and that was used to justify a lot of the bad things done in the 19... Hundreds to maybe 1940s. Um, there's something else called ethnographic history, and ethnographic history is the study of an ethnic group. The problem is, in its origins, you had everybody trying to outline and put together a history that made sense in their worldview, and most of the earlier historians that did this, of course, were Christian. So they would try to make everything work in the world and align to their uh, Christian ideas and make it work within Christianity. So you see theories where of Odin being a real man or Odin being a Scythian or e even a Jew. And this was done because the people that were writing it knew that there was only one true God and that all these other people that were involved in, in the myths and the legends all must have come from legitimate heroes. So they'll say Zeus and, you know, Hercules and Jupiter, and then it's just all heroes that existed. And then they'll go up and say in the, in the North, myth area, North areas and North mythology that, of course, these people existed, but they were just people. Because that allows the, the ethnographic researcher to put it in a context where they're honoring what their ancestors believe in, but like, oh, yeah, he was a great guy. But they're also not disavowing their religious belief because they're reaffirming that there was no one else except for the one single God. So as time has moved on and people are free from religious bias when they're doing ethnographic history, we've realized that these theories are kind of really, really outdated and should not be taken seriously. Unfortunately, they have a pervasiveness because there's a lot of mystery that shrouds uh, around the early portions of the Norse. But... Just be aware of that, and just like no one says the Hindu gods were just magic men running around from Scythia anymore, uh, we should acknowledge that these theories were written about, about 100 to 150 years ago when as a scientist or as a professional man of education, you were not free from the sway of the church. Um, I hope that was a little bit informative for you guys, not too heady. Um, we're going to go to the National Museum in Copenhagen. Try to find some cool shit for you guys. Post it up later. All right. See you later.